Hi, I'm Marty Maxwell Lane, Associate Professor of Graphic Design at the University of Arkansas. Today I'm going to share a semester-long collaborative project that was carried out in the spring of 2018. Senior graphic design students enrolled in human-centered design collaborated with a local nonprofit to examine the ways in which human-centered design research methods could help to build community and establish a framework for future community engagements. Springdale, Arkansas is located 20 minutes north of the University of Arkansas campus. Springdale is located in Northwest Arkansas, which as a whole is rapidly growing. Between 2010 and 2018, it was the 13th fastest growing area in the United States. Due to great economic opportunity for a variety of workers, Springdale has become one of the most diverse communities in the area, home to a vibrant Latinx and Marshallese community. However, many people from these communities lack representation and lack access to community decision-making, which is, which is particularly challenging during this time of gentrification. There are working class neighborhoods that are largely occupied by Latinx and Marshallese communities. The neighborhoods are being transformed. Some would say improved. Some would say it is creating conditions that may force these diverse communities out of the neighborhood. During this time of change, some neighborhoods have become rather desolate. Where there was once vibrant block parties and a tight-knit community, there is now a lack of activity. TASC, the Teen Action Support Center, was founded in 2009 and created The Station, a downtown Springdale teen collaboratory to empower teens to take action in their lives and communities. They work to engage teens from area neighborhoods and, larger, and the larger Springdale community. They are strategically located in the heart of the downtown gentrification. One of the things I love most about The Station is that they employ teen interns from the neighborhood many who go on to be leaders at the station or in other community organizing work. The station offers a place for teens to experiment with robotics, make art, record music, and a rep professional recording studio. In addition, they offer counseling for teens and families. The station also houses an office for the Washington County Juvenile Court, hidden off a bit to the side as to not disrupt the mood, that serves at-risk teens. In 2018, I was introduced to Aaron Shelton, executive director of the station, and we discussed ways that my human-centered design course could support a series of community block parties that the station was hosting. The station had recently been awarded a grant to host a series of four block parties to engage the neighborhood, but particularly the area teens. A side note for later, as you can see in the photo, the age of the students in my class and the age of the teen interns is very, very close. I think this played a critical role in the success of the project, but more on that later. Human Center Design is a design studio that students in our BFA program take the first semester of their senior year. It is largely a research methods course where students are exposed to ethical methodologies for carrying out human-centered research. We focus quite a bit on diversity and inclusion as related to research methods. We make sure students are mindful of who they are including or excluding from the research, Make sure any bias is addressed on the outside of the project, and take on the motto of designing with, not for. This course builds on students' knowledge from their user experience course and prepares them for designing for complexity and the self-directed degree project course they take in their last semester. We typically collaborate with a community in either human-centered design or design for complexity, but rarely both, as back-to-back -back intensive community collaborations can be taxing on students. During this spring course, my human-centered design course partnered with the station, as well as another School of Art course, Social Justice in the Arts. The Social Justice in the Arts students focused on neighborhood activations leading up to the block party to help build trust with the community as well as interest in the event. This is a house around the corner from the station that the station rented to serve as a hub for the block party. In this exact neighborhood, there used to be a neighborhood matriarch that would host community block parties. For one reason or another, those stopped, but many people still remember them. You'll notice that these kids are younger than teenagers. Over the course of the collaboration, these teens proved to be one of the most challenging groups to engage. While the social justice in the arts students focused on building community engagement leading up to the block party, our human-centered design course planned to use the first block party as a prototype to gather data about community needs and desires in a way that would authentically engage the community. The first step in our process was to introduce the two collaborative groups. For this stage, the human-centered design students and the teen interns from the station to do some foundational learning. 
We loaded up and headed 20 minutes north to the station and had an hour-long conversation about the neighborhood. Through student-led conversations, we dug into the neighborhood, what the teens desired for their peers, for themselves, for the next generation. One beautiful connection that emerged that was one of my students actually grew up very nearby and went to high school with several of the teen interns. While the conversation was very organic, it was not without extensive planning. Before coming to the station, my students had done secondary research and had broken into teams with assigned roles for the day. The more outgoing students would sit in the front and help lead the conversation. Other students served as long-form note-takers, other as short idea capturers on post-it notes. Others were mappers, mapping the post-it notes in real time and finding affinities and connections. And lastly, a photographer. Each student had an important role to play, and it all had to be carried out without being too intrusive to the conversation. We would take these analog notes and maps back with us to the classroom to dissect and build on. While the students were digging into the research and getting a foundational understanding for the community, we also began working on the branding for the block party. The branding of the event was not a focus of the course, but was something we wanted to do in service of the event. And the process did help to build trust and strengthen the relationships with the, between the researchers, um, the students, and the community. My design students worked closely with the teen interns from the station throughout the project, co-creating the branding, the concept, and the block party itself. We headed back to the Allen House, which is the house that the station had rented, for the students to present their first round of branding concepts. The concepts were based on ideas generated and values learned during our first mapping session. It was a humble presentation. Students brought paper printouts and presented their ideas to the group of teen interns and community members. The decision to pre present humbly and at the Allen House was strategic. We could have met at the university and used a large screen, but it didn't feel authentic and that we had yet reached a stage of equal collaboration. The power dynamics would have been skewed, and I do not think the community would have felt as if they had as much agency to participate in the creative process. After all of the students presented, we had to work to select one brand for the event. During this discussion, the station team worked to narrow down the language, concept, and imagery that resonated with them most. They worked with the students on the spot to come up with a direction that blended aspects that they felt the most connected to. The end result was building the block with ribbon, rhythm and was completed in three languages, English, Spanish, and Marshallese. About 40% of my class was bilingual in Spanish and English, making the translations easy to manage. Once the branding was established, the students worked to flesh out the promotional collateral, including neighborhood yard signs, social media, flyers, etc. Concurrently, the students were working to develop human-centered design research studies that they could carry out at the block party. We invited the station team to campus to help us assemble signs and review some of the preliminary research ideas. Everyone, including the executive director of the station and myself, was in the assembly line working together. Much like cooking, making things together works to build trust, empathy, and understanding, three components that are key to human-centered design. While the sign making was going on upstairs, Aaron went down to the lower floor to review early ideas that the students were generating for the block party. We knew that all activities had to be trilingual and that they had to engage a range of ages from young kids to teens to adults. The activities had to gather quantitative and qualitative data while also entertaining and engaging. The type of data that we were gathering was based on the conversations that we had at the very beginning of the collaboration and on the needs learned throughout our collaborative engagement. We wanted to make sure that what we were gathering would be useful to the station after the event that would help them better understand the needs and desires of the neighborhood and help them plan the following block parties. Students landed on ideas like an event bingo card that would tell us about people's lifestyles, a dream wall that captured teens' aspirations, and a photo booth that would provide free, high-quality family photos to the community, and a game called This or That that would track how people voted on specific community-based questions when given a choice.
The event was held on a Saturday in the spring. Students all attended and ran their booths and various activities, documenting, capturing data, and engaging with the community. One of the main takeaways the students learned from this was the differences in experience and quality of outcome that you get from different types of research methods. We could have sent out a survey to the neighborhood homes, even trilingual ones, but the quality of the responses just would not compare to the information learned through this deep 15-week collaboration. Additionally, students learned through hands-on experience what an empathy-driven and inclusive research practice can look like. While we watch this video recap, itself created by an area team, I want to share this quote from Erin Shelton, who I mentioned was the executive director of the station. Quote, building the block? It might be cliche to say, but you had to be there. You had to be the student, the neighborhood kid, the family, the organizer, or one of the centered humans. Maybe that is the main lesson. An abstraction, human-centered design can never be properly understood. You have to be immersed. You have to get beyond your comfort zone and trust the process. That's what happened. By trusting the process, by being a little vulnerable, Marty and her students earned our trust. And it is only with trust that any human can truly be centered. Building the block taught us all so much. Ultimately, we learned that there's always more to learn. We are one big human family after all. Did I mention it was a blast? Oh, and hugs. Lots of hugs. After the event, students had to review the data, identify insights, and present our findings. The students created information diagrams based on the data. For example, from the dream wall, they broke down the dreams into categories like self-oriented versus career-oriented, grounded versus speculative. From the bingo cards, they could provide data around how many adults have cars, how many teens want to go to college, how many jobs people hold, etc. This type of data can help organizations like the station work to better engage their community. The students compiled the findings into a book that now lives with the station. When we first met with the station, many of the teens shared frustrations about not having a voice in the decisions that were being made in their community. They openly wondered about how the city could better engage with the local community and teens. I believe that through this process, they have learned ways that they could engage their community and improve access to decision making. While that was not an original goal of the project, it's a rather impactful outcome. The book that the class left behind not only documents the block party and the insights from the human-centered design research, but also functions as a guidebook so that they can utilize some of the same methods in the future, whether for block parties or other civic engagement. 
Thank you all for your time. If anyone would like to continue this discussion, please reach out. Thank you all.